exhibition, The Incomplete Child, we intended to reach a minority in the Danish society, namely people with physical difficulties, and tell their story. We wish to point to an interesting parallel between biology and mythology. Did the fetuses, presumably witnessed already in the antiquity, inspire to histories about mermaids and giants with one eye? On the one hand, modern aids for handicapped, elevators, transportation or communicative tools have given people with physical difficulties much more independence and opportunities for self-expression. Prenatal diagnostics threatens this minority in our society. With the exhibition, I also wish to break loose from a museum dogma. As a curator, I do not need to speak with my audience because my gut feelings are sublime. <laughs> and the handicapped people I interviewed were generally positive. One woman said, I have a nice feeling. It is wonderful that you could focus, put a focus on the problem. I mean, how is the body unusual? It shouldn't be perfect all the time. The thesis in, in my installation was just a small part, a small perspective of a very much larger exhibition that was about recent biomedicine. And the front side had these uh, five different the technologies, the technological apparatuses, one could say, uh, in, uh, by means of which visualizations of physicists have been produced uh, in the course of history. And what initially triggered me was uh, the way in which such visualizations are often articulated as a kind of ultrasonic peep show, something that makes, renders the pregnant body 100% transparent. It was soaking in all these wonderful, uh, inspiring, theoretical, uh, research-based discussions and work we've been doing for years. On the other hand, I also felt this, this, this enormous difficulty in trying to convert that into something that has no words, that needs to be told somehow in objects. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the meeting between research and exhibition that, that is, I think, the first dogma of uh, Thomas and Canales' list. Uh, really also poses a lot of problems, I think. In the United States, the fetus is, um, is a very charged political icon. Uh, the sonogram, which of course turned the fetus into a person, uh, picturing the fetus is a rife with metaphor. I want to kind of bring into the fore now the kind of somatic reactions that one has when one is confronted uh, with living or once living matter in an exhibition space. Who posed them? These are all sort of questions one would ask when one is looking at a painting or a sculpture. Um, I named this series of photographs Water Babies after the fairy tale by Charles Kingsley, who was a contemporary of Charles Darwin. I'm comparing the way the uh, uterus is represented and questions with regard to reconstruction of these feti as cultural objects come into the fore. You can see that I'm not really interested in the anomalies as much as I am in the beauty. We have so many uh, uh, questions from the press, we want to take pictures, not only from the specimens, but they want to have the, the pictures from the fetuses, the malformations, and we, we have the policy so far to say no. Uh, the fact that these pictures uh, or objects will just leave the realm of these, um, this, this somehow protective rooms into a general public, uh, that, that, I think that, that then we become nervous. And I would argue that it's partly because of the public's still naive belief, even in this digital age where we're saturated by photography, there is still something inherent about the power of implied truth in the photograph. Because they are like black holes, they suck so much energy, and all, they are so evocative with the capital E, <coughs> and explode the black hole of evocative objects and get the discussion back to the reality we're living in now. Oh, well, okay. What if I did see an image of the fetus from the Ontario on a t-shirt? Um, is that just, you 
know, why is that uh, a problem? Because the alternative is to say, all right, these objects are just too confronting and we can't ever show them to people and they're upsetting too many people, so why don't we just throw them out? In the, in the reductionism of, of biomedical research in the 1950s, most medical schools in the United States incinerated their pathological, teratological, and anatomical collections because they no longer were seen as serving any purpose. That once he's out there, there is no longer the dignity. Uh, for hundreds of years, some of these deformed fetuses were uh, surrounded uh, in prejudice, moral and religious prejudice, and they were considered monstrosities. There's a website uh, put together by Randy Grantham, who's an artist who's uh, anti-abortion, and he features a whole range of destructive instruments from Smelly's Forceps, Bayesian tribes, Cephalo tribes, and he sprinkles in fetal parts there. It's, it's a misappropriation yeah. of the fetal material, and, and I think that museums could play a responsible role in addressing that. In the back, behind black drapes, okay? So they have the whole collection <coughs> of all sorts of ex extraordinary, beautiful, and disturbing specimens. There at the back, in heavy black drapes, some viewers may find these specimens. You could see the queue outside. Everybody wanted to open those curtains, okay? Because it was forbidden. And that's what makes it slightly pornographic.